Hey and welcome. Today we will solve meeting rooms interview question which mostly asked by top companies like that. So let's get into it. First example here, we have a two dimensional array which contains array elements that holds start and end time for each meeting. I thought instead of explaining this, a visual of what is happening could be very much more explanatory. So here we are. As you can see, we have conflicts. One person cannot attend two meetings at the same time. So that is why the result is false here. Second example, this time, every meeting happens in distinct time intervals so that is why we are returning true as a result we can definitely come up with a brute first solution as a starting point where we compare intervals by having a helper method called overlap and passing two intervals into it so what does this overlap function do is simple again some visuals if you consider two distinct meetings the minimum end time of those two literally I'm pointing to the end time of earlier meeting might be less or equal to whatever the max of start time of both will give us. Literally this time we are talking about the start time of second meeting. If that is the case we might return false from this function because they are distinct right? They don't conflict with each other but this will not be the case for meetings that are overlapping. The minimum end time of those two meetings will be larger than the maximum of starting time of those two here and that is the conflict zoom there so we might return true for that indicating these two intervals are overlapping this is completely a fair logic but the downside is that it happens inside of double for loop so time complexity will be O of n in power of 2 and not efficient enough. Well, there is still a better way to solve this by help of sorting. Let's consider these intervals for a second. In order to remove the cost of our second iteration, we can sort the meetings based on their starting time to get them in a correct timeline order. And if we do a simple iteration over them, we can check if the ending time of each meeting is not more than the starting time of the next one to it and of course if so we might return false because that's the condition for our overlap otherwise if we haven't meet that condition during our iteration like in this case here we might return true meaning that these meetings are distinct and one person can attend them all by doing this we will have a bit of optimal time complexity but don't think that since because of we will have one iteration it will give us o of n time complexity in fact we will have o of n log n more on that at the end of the video where we explore time and space complexity. Now let's jump right into the code. So here we are in VS Code this time. I have two test suites in the right hand side, one for true cases and one for cases with overlap which we should return false for it. And in each of them we are testing three conditions. A normal distinct case, only two meetings case, and finally the case that intervals are unsorted. So first we will sort the array based on their starting time and the point is we will not going to assign it into a new variable because it is unnecessary and it will take all of any space. Then it's time to do our iteration and since we are checking each value with next one in the row we might consider the last item which has no neighbor and that is why we have negative one after the length. So as we discussed it before we will check if ending time of a meeting is larger than next one's beginning then they are overlapping and we might return false immediately and break out of the loop otherwise if we pass through our iteration without returning false we might return true indicating that there was no overlap now i will open my terminal if i run this test cases should be passing let's jump back into the slides for time and space complexity for time complexity, we will have O of n because of our for loop and O of n log n because of sorting. And since sorting has bigger time complexity, as you can see in a complexity chart, it will dominate O of n and will take over the overall complexity for us. For space complexity, it will be O of 1 because we just sorted the intervals array and did not assign it into a new variable because it was unnecessary. So that was it for this video. Thanks for watching and please leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. I will put the link for arrays playlist in the description to check it out in addition of a few other playlists as well and finally hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one